Yeah, Kurt Vonnegut said once uh, that science is magic that works. When I was a little kid, I always wanted to invent something cool, like a superpower. Uh, that's why actually I chose to study physics. While I was doing my PhD, then I, we started looking at ways in which we could develop a very tiny sensor to measure chemical composition. I went to conferences, so I published a few papers. I was actually collaborating a lot. So we had a bunch of nerds that were doing stupid and crazy stuff at the same time. But also we had our goals that were within the projects. We had a journal club where we had to present other research. Every evening I was reading something that was new to me, but was within the field. And of course, once you do a PhD, you are pushing the boundaries of the knowledge. We did lots of iterations, like 20 iterations, and we failed a lot. Then we discovered that actually, you know, we have to throw away all the complexity. So we chose essentially to be inspired by biology. And then we found out about the mantis shrimp, which has these 16 channels, photoreceptors, they are able to have a super vision. Why don't we try to make a sensor that is inspired by, let's say, nature to miniaturize a full instrument into a tiny sensor that can be manufactured. And that's when we start the Mantis Spectre, right? So it's pretty simple to explain, but also complex at the same time. Let's imagine that you have an object and then you shine some infrared light on top of this object. And if you look at this light in the near infrared, you can essentially create a model on how the light reflects with the object. So then we have a fingerprint. So we can build a database of these fingerprints. And then once we apply machine learning, then we can understand what is the object that we were measuring and what is inside. We can measure, for example, different types of polymers like plastics to understand if something is polystyrene or polypropylene. Or we can measure different types of textile to understand, for example, if your jacket is a cotton or polyester, it can be used, for example, for recycling. But also we can measure food stuff. You can correlate the light with certain unknown, for example, about fat and protein in milk. So just making correlations based on light. It's a supervision, it's a supervision essentially, yes. So it is essentially something that at the moment you cannot see because you only see the visible, but through another sensor you can see the invisible. You can see, you know, things that you cannot see. We actually collaborate very closely with the Dutch police, measuring cocaine, amphetamine, MDMA, ecstasy, and we proved that we are able to classify them. Our technology can be used allowing police officers to get an instant result before sending the sample to the lab. So they want to use it mainly for, for pre-screening. Yeah, it is, it is magic. Welcome to the Magic Show, where we are going to identify different types of coffee based on their spectral signature. We are going to place the, the sample on the spectropod. We are going to press scan. Then we are going to measure the spectral fingerprint. And it says that is Ethiopia. Is it right? Yes. Yes. yes! It is incredible. And you know, when we also see the results, also we cannot believe that actually this thing is working. Because there are applications that we cannot even imagine today. And that's why once the, so the technology is there, the product is there, company will start building applications as well that we cannot imagine. We need to support everybody to, you know, to make use of such a technology. We strongly believe that there will be a spectral sensor in your smartphone in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, sometimes people say that electronics was the technology of the 20th century and the photonics will be the technology of the 21st century, right? Wherever we see an organic materials, we can measure. The knowledge is there. It's up to you to get access to this superpower. <laughs>